Red fruit dishes, from a powerful rondon to crispy chips, have warmed the heart and belly of many a Caribbean person, especially in San Andres, where bread food is a passion. Here in San Andres, it's been a part of the culture and the landscape. If you have a breadfruit tree in your yard, you'll never starve. San Andreans remembered many times in their youth when the breadfruit tree in their backyard was often one of the few things that fed them in tough times. Artocarpus altilis. That is his scientific name. That was an experience that I delivered at, um, at the university. Why is so important the, the scientific names? Because it will be a name that can be identified in any part of the world. Artocarpo altilis, breadfruit tree. Some call it the tree of life also. Obviously, it was one of the trees that was selected to bring to the new world especially with the slaves them and there we have a history through the the mountain of the bounty why um, them had the idea to bring breadfruit to america to feed the, the the slaves them on this boat we have two pitya one pitya of those is to, with the mel gibson and the next one with marlon brando in 1769, Captain James Cook sailed to Tahiti and discovered breadfruit. He recognized its potential as a food crop in other tropical areas and proposed to King George III that a special expedition be commissioned to transport breadfruit plants from Tahiti to the Caribbean. In 1787, William Bly was appointed captain of the HMS Bounty and instructed by the Royal Crown to transport over 1,000 breadfruit trees from Tahiti to the Caribbean to be used as a high energy, nutritious food source for British slaves. However, a month into the voyage, Bly's crew mutinied, expelling him from the ship in a longboat and throwing all the plants overboard. Really is the history how the breadfruit was distributed in the whole Caribbean. The history is that they was bringing some of these small trees um, to distribute to the different colonies that they have in the Caribbean. Obviously, anytime you sailing on a boat, the salt spray fall on the trees them and begin to dry them. So what the captain did on board, the captain began to use the water that they have to the crew for wet the breadfruit them. Obviously, this begin to cause uh, disgusting amongst the crew. So every island, what they reach, what they used to do, they used to take some of the trees them and throw them overboard. The natives them used to pick up the, the trees them and begin to plant them. That is basically the history of how the breadfruit reached to the Caribbean. Bly completed a mission to collect breadfruit trees and other botanical specimens from the Pacific, which he transported to the West Indies. Specimens were given to the Royal Botanic Garden in St. Vincent. Providence returned to Britain in August 1793, having been re-rated as a sloop on September 30, 1793. It was this journey that successfully introduced breadfruit to West Indies. There you can find some of the original trees planted over 200 years ago in Jamaica, still producing fruit and it's being spread all over the Great Caribbean.
Why I say that was the, the tree of life? Because them only not, was only thinking on the fruit. They was thinking also on the wood to construct, to build boat, to build house. So them did see in the breadfruit alternative to make a good reforestation and also have food and have lumber to build different things. The breadfruit have a lot of myths, I call them myth legends or traditions. For example, everyone wants to know how is the way how you can plant breadfruit. First thing, you have to look on the moon. You don't pick breadfruit only until when time with the moon racing to a full moon. For example, these days is a special days because the moon growing and when the moon growing, all the strength of the tree go on the top. It don't suffer on the root. We take it out in these days and we can put it in water. We put it on water until the moon begin to get small. That is when the moment, that is the ideal moment to transplant. Okay, this one is a piece of root of a big tree. As we can see, the sprout then get on this root that be, uh, come out, out of the earth. And the Mealico sprout will be a new breadfruit tree. With just how we cut the root, the direction, how the root cut is the same direction that we have to plant it. That is what made part of the secret of the breadfruit. Okay, the breadfruit is a wonderful uh, fruit that we have here and uh, to preserve it we have to make some management because the breadfruit have some enzymes that make it uh, degradate fast. So to preserve it and use it in more time we want to cut it up, we want to uh, uh, scale it, the, the scale it and make a chalk that is uh, scaling and then after use cold water with ice and neutralize the enzymes that they have. So let us start the cutting of the bread food. The bread food is, is, is something that we use and sometimes we, we, we don't have it. So to have it more time, a longer time, even if we want to fry or or having uh, to stew or to make a rundown or or other food that we have, yeah. So we this uh, one already. So we going to. Make a little washing up. So now we have we don't wash my good. And now we have in the I had water uh, boiling. So now we're going to use salt and sugar. Yeah? So salt we take one tablespoon, more or less one tablespoon. And we have one quarter, one liter of water and sugar. We use 
one, two, and three of sugar. So this is like a, a swirl that we have that going to neutralize the enzyme then. Okay, we don't stir them up. So we put the bread food in, inside. Okay, so we have them inside here, the water with the swirl. More or less this, this water has to be biting around uh, or before bite. Uh, let's put the time more or less uh, three to five minutes. Okay, so we going to we have uh, ice water with ice. So we're going to put no bread food inside here. So we're causing the, we're choking the bird food with, with cold water from hot to cold. Yeah, so we have it here. So I'm ready. Practically this, this process is is fast because the ice, the water is cool. So him practically get and get cool immediately we could say. So I think it's cool, we take them out now. So we can see how they slice them, see? See, the, the color, the, how the color, the, the change. Let's see the, the comparison with this one, how the breadfruit start oxidate here. Okay. So we have them ready to pack. So now we use the zip lock. And we so we pack him, make him stay in a way that the free the, the, the cool benefit. And we have our bird food ready to, to freeze. And in this uh, process we could uh, store him more than one month. So we have them ready in the seed black bag. So we're going to freeze them now. So we put them in the freezer in the street. Make them lay them and make the cold penetrate on them. So we have them packing and the bird food there for last a long time. One time we want to take it with the frost, we could defrost in the microwave or defrost him and uh, take him out and put him in the far fry, the animal be hot, we fry him, or far cook for a different uh, cooking that we're going to use. That's the way we preserve the bird food.
I put the breadfruit to buy it. After I finish buying it, I put it in the liquor, a little bit of water, about two quarter of water, and then um, with some um, milk, with little milk, and then after I beat it up with a little bit of flour, about two teaspoons of flour, and one teaspoon of baking powder. Mm. A baking powder like this. And then after you know, I beat it up, after I don't beat it up, I put it in a little uh, bread sponge. Feel the nose stay stick up, and then after you know, I put the sartén, the frying pan. After I throw the oil, I put it too hot, and after hot, after that, put it in the in the uh, bread scrolls, and then after I set it in the. Peel the bread, the bread fruit. After we peel the bread fruit, we put the salt. After we put the, the salt, we put on the frying pan. We light the stove. We put throw in the oil and put it to hot. After the hot, we put in the bread fruit to fry. Mm -hmm. We leave it till it fry. After the fry, then we wind it, turn it till it fry good. After the fry good, then we take it out of the frying pot and then we put it into a next pot so it can dry. Bread fruit flitters. <laughs> so, bread fruit become for us as islanders very important in our life. You can imagine a fried fish without a bread fruit. You can imagine a rondon without a breadfruit. Thinking on, on the alternative that breadfruit have for us, we begin to do a lot of work here locally. We're working how to conserve breadfruit, uh, peel, slice, and freeze. Also, we're working on the breadfruit with wax because everyone know that breadfruit does get ripe too fast. In three or four days, the breadfruit get ripe. With this uh, uh, technique, we have proved that the breadfruit can last all 15 days. One of the other use that we have here on the island with the breadfruit is a porridge, especially when the breadfruit get uh, ripe on us. We study take it and, and make a special porridge. And the porridge is so heavy, it's so strong, that anytime you drink one of them, you, you stay like you're dead. That's why they call that parish criminal. Also, we, we know how to, to make the flour out of the, out of the breadfruit. We take the breadfruit, we peel it, we slice it, and we put it on the sun. We put it in the sun for two, three days, and after that, we can grate it, or we can uh, grind it, and then we get the flour. From the flour, we can make also the porridge, you can make bread, you can make patties, you can make cookies, you can make even lasagnas with it. So, uh, thinking on that, and that we notice that the people just eat it fry or, 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 in, or in Rondon, we decided to make a, a recipe book. When we begin the investigation, well, I was thinking that we only was going to get four or five different recipes was amazing to find out that the ladies here in the island have more than 15 different recipes. And, and in the Caribbean, 
we have between 20 to 30 recipes. But in the Polynesia, that is where all this, uh, this special tree came from, them have more than 50 or 60 recipes. Today, we have a book with 20 recipes, 10 from the Caribbean and 10 from the island. Looking that the people then use it in other ways, in we have more alternatives. Finally, the different studies that the National University made around the breadfruit, it get to the conclusion that is the tree or is the product that the highest product with highest production on the island. We consider that we're producing more or less between 1,200 to 1,500 ton by year. The bad history or the sad part of the history is that we're losing the 70% of it. We don't making good use of it. And if the fruit that have more alternative to establish a business or to establish a commerce. I feel that it's um, from all uh, islanders dream that one day our breadfruit will be placed in the supermarket, them in the continent and in every, every place because everyone that comes to San Andres and consume the breadfruit, they will never forget it. So I consider that it's alternative for we islanders as uh, farmers, as, as a place, a touristical place, this can be practically the symbol of the agriculture on the islands then. And don't forget something, always we say fishing and agriculture is the backbone of our culture. Today we are going to talk about the famous breadfruit pack and the breadfruit bread. Ingredients to the breadfruit pack. First of all, we put the cinnamon to boil in water. Peel the breadfruit, we cut it up, we put it to boil. After we done boil, we put it in a bowl, we beat it. First, all time people used to use a beating stick. Everything matter now we no use no beating stick. We use a blender. After that, in the porridge we put local vanilla, nutmeg. Normally we use coconut milk or evaporated milk. We put local sugar that how according to how you use your sugar. Put him to buy it. That is the breadfruit porridge that how you the call it. The breadfruit bread, the same process. The difference between the porridge and the breadfruit, the bread, you have to bake it. I throw little salt butter and you should be in the oven. You drop a little flour to keep it that it not stay to serve for you can take it out of the pan. It is a form of starch that releases sugar slowly into the bloodstream compared to cereals from wheat flour which release a burst of sugar. So breadfruit is better for diabetes and obesity control. You can stew breadfruit, roast it, fry it, boil it, grill it. It absorbs almost any flavor. You can eat it as a starch staple, as part of a salad, as a snack, as a sweet dessert, or a full energy porridge, or even as a chutney or pickle, depending on how ripe it is 
and your recipe. And according to several studies on breadfruit, it has a great potential as a powerhouse for sustainable local agriculture, a potential we have yet to realize. Most varieties of breadfruit are purgative if eaten raw. Some varieties are boiled twice and the water thrown away to avoid unpleasant effects, while there are a few named cultivars that can be safely eaten without cooking. Something special with the breadfruit, we can say that it's a, it's a tree that um, reproduce himself. That's why we talk about sometimes about breadfruit work. For example, I was mentioning that we have the alternative to have a small one and dig it out from the root and transplant it. But also we have this alternative. Every tree put out their roots. Well, I didn't mention only one of the ways that we can reproduce breadfruit, but we have other ways that we can reproduce breadfruit, not only by the root, but the root is the most, because it's the most common one to see to reproduce. Even the tree teach us that is the easiest one. That's why a breadfruit tree, we, we can see on the left, we can see on the right, breadfruit trees. So, that means to say that this one, it's one that coming from one of the root them. Okay, this size of breadfruit is possible that we can dig it out and transplant it. A breadfruit like this will produce before a year. So that is one of the alternatives and that is one of the secrets that we learn here on the island also. So why we say that breadfruit work? Why? Because all the time him putting out a new one a new barn side of him. After him become an adult and get big, he will also put out another one on his root. So if we don't stop it, breadfruit will walk to the right, it will walk to the left, it will right to north, to south. Everywhere that the, the root begin to spread out, we got the alternative or the possibility that the more breadfruit tree is going to grow. I was saying that it's not only true the, the, the root, we can see in some of the trees them sprout on the body of the tree. Also, that is another alternative to get a new breadfruit tree. Especially those that, that we see that the sprout is very strong, very green. We select it from the body of the, of the tree and we just cut it. We cut it also in full moon. We put it in water for a few days until the moon begins to get small and then we can transplant it. Well, bell fruit for me is a, is a fruit that from my man I know it and it's like, how you say, planting, cassada. It's something where benefit and help the community. Because sometimes the neighbor don't have nothing and they come and say I want a bell fruit and Everybody stretch one of the hand to each one. You can stew it, fry it, run it down. Anyhow, buy it, it's not how you want it. You can make porridge, you can make bread, anything you want out of it. We know how the bell fruit full. When I have some, some thing on it, like jokyo, it's not full. When it's smooth, come off when it's full so we have to know when the full and when the right now this no full you juke your hand so when you get it and you see the smooth it when the good I recommend the you coming up to try plant one tree because everybody know looking one tree to plant because this, they see that it's very good then take it from here and carry the continent and plant it also because it's a good fruit. Sometimes a friend come and say them we can get two bell fruit, I pass it and give them. It's good for many things. It, it complements with plenty things, such as the porridge. I love the porridge. I love the porridge and then children, my daughter love it fried and oh yeah. in the bread in the rondon. Rondon without bell fruit like it is not even rondon.
Breadfruit leaves are eagerly eaten by domestic livestock. They are fed to cattle and goats. In Guam, to cattle, horses, and pigs. Horses are apt to eat the bark of young trees as well. So new plantings must be protected from them. The latex serves for caulking boats and mixed with color earth is used as paint for boats. The wood is light in weight, not very hard but strong, elastic and termite resistant and is used for construction and furniture. In Samoa, it is the standard material for house posts and for the rounded roof ends of native houses. Fiber from the bark is difficult to extract but highly durable. Malaysians fashion it into clothing. Material for tape cloth is obtained from the inner bark of young trees and branches. The breadfruit leaf is believed to lower blood pressure and is also said to relieve asthma. Crush leaves are applied to the tongue as a treatment for thrush. When the breadfruit break, they like this. You have, you have to have the coconut milk ready. First, we buy the breadfruit, and after we require it with the coconut milk, after you add what is the flour, um, butter, sugar, nutmeg. You have to take the batidora and you batter it. And you have also um, throw a little bit of salt. And you put it in the oven on slow fire to you believe it cook enough and after it cook that you see that if the bottom is browning on the edge you can take notice when the bottom brown and then you lay, put it on top and uh, my oven also have the electric part in the gas so that it can brown the top so i put it on the top and then it brown when you see it brown well you don't know that it is ready well normally it's two hours because you have to put it on slow fire that you can cook. You don't know what you just see like it. As I tell you around the edge brown, you don't know that it's ready to brown on the top. Two hours, two hours, minimum two hours or, or two hours and a half. And then it, it, you leave it to cool because you can't cut it hot. You always have to make it cool and then when it cool, then it's where you can get out the portion then better. Because you know when it hot, it's soft. And when it cool, you know it hard, then you can cut it and sit down and enjoy it. Ready to eat. <laughs> so anyone who eat it, I hope you know enjoy it. <laughs> Well, breadfruit grows on trees, a starchy fruit that looks like a green pimpled softball. It is now enjoying a bout of sudden popularity. It is gluten-free, dense with protein, and rich in vitamin B and fiber. It has the mild, earthy flavor of a tuber, and it looks pretty neat. What appears to be a singular globe of fruit is in fact thousands of tiny fruits fused together like a mosaic. Although breadfruit can be eaten at all stages of development in the Caribbean, we tend to eat it matured, when it is soft to the touch with a subtle hint of sweetness. However, we often wonder how the breadfruit came all the way from the South Pacific to the Great Caribbean. Well, yes, we want to know uh, if we will have breadfruit for a time here in the island, yes. Well, I was mentioned to you all a while ago that also, it's not only through the root we can get the, the new plant of breadfruit. We also can use this uh, uh, sprout them. 
the sprout then that near to the body of the tree is very good sprout. Here we can do two or three different systems. I could have come and put a bag here with some dirt and leave it for a while until it put out the roots then. And then I will come after and just cut it here. Or also, I can come on a full moon, cut it, put it in water, just like how I do the one with the, with the root. And after a while, when I see that they have enough root, I will take it out and then transplant it. We will have bread fruit for a while, but was very um, curious or very interested to know how much bread fruit we had here on the island. So uh, last year, we made a, a census and we only count those trees that was in production. Not all trees that was in out of production or small trees that didn't begin uh, to have production. We count only those that we can that was on production. And it was amazing to know that just by eight, by eight trees, we didn't we don't have the two thousand trees on the island. We have a thousand 992 trees on the island of breadfruit in production. That gives us approximately, as the Howard did say, between 1,200 to 1,500 tons. The bad part or the sad part of the history is that we're losing the 70% of the breadfruit that we produce, we're producing. That means to say we're losing 840 tons of breadfruit. And when, we are, when I say 840 tons of breadfruit, is something very amazing, it's, very, it's a high impact. Why? A breadfruit, more or less this size, weigh five pounds. A breadfruit just costs 2,000 pesos. That means to say, if I divide the, the, the amount, that means to say, a pound of breadfruit just costs 400 pesos. It's the cheapest alternative to feed a family. If I carry a breadfruit to a family, the whole family eat with that breadfruit. With that same 2,000 pesos, you only can buy a plantain or a pon a, a, a potatoes or a pon a yam or yuca. So breadfruit become the best alternative to feed our people them, to, to fight with, the, with, with poverty, we with, with fight against harvest, and we have it on, in our yards them. So I encourage everybody to have at least two breadfruit trees in the yard. One for feed the family and one for business. Because as how I say, breadfruit is the best alternative to make business on the island. Don't forget it. Trees begin to bear fruit in three to five years, producing for many decades. An average size tree with a canopy cover of 25 square meters will conservatively produce 100 fruit, 100 kilograms, while larger trees can yield 400 to 600 fruit. Yields are superior to other starchy staples due in part to its verticality of production. A similar size plot of land planted in plantains or root and tuber crops will produce less food while needing greater labor and materials. Breadfruit contributes to sustainable food security, diversified sustainable agriculture and agroforestry, improved soil conditions and watersheds, and valuable environmental benefits, including reduction of CO2. Breadfruit is more than a meal. It is a source of hope, an emblem of prosperity, and a symbol for thriving in everyday life. The fruit has clearly transcended folk history and academic attention and attained a spot in modern day of San Andres culture.